Well, as you can see, my eyes are like absolutely closed. I'm very tired this morning. So I've just done one job, a bit of a door leak problem. Water leak in the door, that's easy. But now I've got an N57 and it's a twin turbo version. And there's a problem with one of the turbos. Now on these, I've had it in for literally five minutes. I've road tested it. First there was loads of power and then it went into limp mode. Now there's no power. Now it's doing a bit of a check now and all that business. But I think it could be a change a change over bypass flap. They seize on these. And when they seize, what actually happens is they can't uh, change from the big turbo to the small turbo and vice versa. So you end up with only really one turbo working, or you end up sometimes where it's stuck in the middle and both are like uh, it's leaking and bypassing. Uh and they always say in BMW terms, oh just check the air filtering so we ain't gonna be that. Could be, but it it's not, is it? Let's be honest. I just, you know, this is this is the problem when you work for it. When, when, when you have to use this stuff, what the dealers use, this is like the level what you're at. Compare the air filter installed with the air filter according to the electronic parts catalog. Check the air filter for formation, fold formation and kinks. You know, are you kidding me? What? Well, this was probably like 10 years ago, 12 years ago when they had problems with air filters and they don't update it. You get the young people coming into the trade, they'll start messing around, wasting time checking bloody air filters. I mean, you know, are you kidding me or what? Like, no, it has a normal air filter. It's not even an original one, what's in it? So what we'll do now is, I mean, really, to be quite honest with you, I could just go to, instead of doing all this guarded fault finding, I could just use my head and just go directly to where I think uh, the fault is. But yeah, it could be a leaking charge air cooler. Uh, I've had them before. So let's just see and see what the Shibula Jackson is. Sounds all right, doesn't it? Sound like there's any air leaks on that. Sometimes you've just got to kind of have a gut feeling. So what I've done is I've gone straight to the solenoid valve, that's for the turbine bypass, and what that does, you can see it on there, it swings left and right, or up and down, however you want to go, that should go forward there, it's in its rest position, and what that does basically, it changes over the flap between the, the small turbine, high pressure one, which is this one, and the lower pressure, the bigger turbo underneath, so if that's not working, you've probably only got your bigger turbo, which is lower pressure. So it was moaning on the test plan with this to that, it was the gas pressure sensor. But basically, if you just look at this now, you start pumping it, it's not moving, and it's not even holding vacuum. So I, either the pipes fell off or it's broken, but you know, we need to check that out, don't we? So that's probably what the issue is. There's no control over the turbine flap. So let's try and fix it and then uh, see if we can get rid of that fault cord. See if we get it working. This guy's waiting. <laughs> So basically that was the issue and uh, I'm just going to chop it off and make a new one basically. So that was amazing really that I thought of that. So here's the compressor bypass. So in between the, two, the staging of the turbo charges, this will go like this, like this. And it'll cut off one compressor. This is, this is the low pressure, this is the big, big one here now. And with it being a big one, that's like the one that comes in after the high pressure is like fast spool up and then this bad boy supplies the air after the high pressure spools up. Um, there is the turbine flap canister. So all very interesting right, stuff. So essentially, I've, put it, I've made it a lot slacker. Some idiot has obviously been playing with it. And what I've done now is I've put it on, but I've left a bloody big massive loop there because it was just too tight. And as the engine's rocking with the horsepower and it's pulling side to side, it's abraded it. So there you are, basically, that's the situation. I also need to tell them that this is absolutely pissing oil out everywhere and that needs to be replaced because it's just completely knackered. Because that's knackered, isn't it? So we'll, we'll video that and send a message to the service department that it needs to be changed. Right, let's try that again with Mitty back, shall we? I'll video, I'll, I'm not going to video it again because I'm not going to edit stuff anymore. It's old in vacuum, that's tasty. Now what we'll do, to check the travel, it's because the camera was banging them out over the bloody place, is we'll just release it and we'll see that it's working. Not so easy on these, I can't stand these twin turbos. So what I'll do, I'll release the Mitty back now, 
and we'll look at it and we'll see. Oh, that's beautiful. That's sexy. Oh, man. That's the nicest, most amazing thing I think I've ever seen in my entire life, basically, to be fair. Jesus, that was nice. I really enjoyed seeing that. Right, I think that's going to be fixed, so let's just check now with our pressure test again. On this stuff. Right, good. So what I did, because whoever's done this at some point, uh, you see a lot of these little joins here, they made it too tight, basically. They didn't, they, they zip-tied it to that hole. That's one thing, but why the hell you didn't, you didn't zip it there, I don't know. It was rubbing on the turbo. And there's actually a proper fastener down there where they didn't bother even connecting, which connects it to a piece of metal bracket. So all I've done is, because that's the original length, I've basically lengthened it with a nice adapter. And I'm now going to put it back on the solenoid there. And that'll be just nice, won't it? And we just sort of kind of leave that just tucked in. No zip ties, no nothing. We'll leave it there like that. And then I'll, what I will do is I will put something, I think, possibly just on there, just to hold that out of the way. We'll just loop a zip tie down through here and then just leave it a bit loose. And I think that'll be right. So let's build that up and do that test. Now we're going to do the same test that did before. It's an Hermas test and it'll also be the exhaust pressure. So if that turbine flap was in the wrong position and the small turbo didn't have enough exhaust gas to spill it up, that's hopefully what the fault code was. Pretty much I hope so anyway. If it's not, I'm going to be in trouble. Um, so let's see. Let's, let's try and do that now. Let's try and spill it up. Let's see what happens. Let's hope it works. Oh, there's quite noisy there. Seems all right. Let's see. So that's running quite nice now. That give it a quick spill around the around the block now. See what it's like. Because it spilled up before. Well, it was laggy. There were no um, low end because there were no high pressure stage. Then the um, how can I say the second stage, the lower pressure stage, which kicks in after the boost has spilled up. Just to, just to give it some mid-range and top-end power. That comes in, no problem. Just pin me back in seat action to be fair. But then, when I tried it again, boom, limp ball, no power at all. So, basically, the fault comes on dead easy, so this should, it should manifest instantly if it hasn't fixed it. But I know it's fixed because the bloody turbine weren't changing over, so essentially it was in the wrong position. When there's no vacuum on it, for some reason it sends to just spill the bottom turbo, the bigger one, and don't spill up the high speed, the high pressure turbo, the small one, don't spill it up at all. When that flaps in wrong position, it won't spill it up. So, with Mitty back, when we popped it, I cut my finger as well. They're not good, these. We'll work on No space. When Mitty back were pumped, but we know the turbine flaps working. We can't see inside. If it don't work now, then obviously there's a problem inside. But I've just done that, as you've seen on the screen, the gas test. There was a lot of gas pressure because the turbo's now spilling and it weren't spilling before. So that's how I know it's all right, because there wasn't any pressure, as you remember from the earlier one. So that's it. Let's have a road test, and then uh, that'll be the end of this blog episode, anyway. Right, we'll road test it now. We'll road test it now. And I can tell you it'll be right, this. So that is a job well done, all's well that ends well as they say.